Hi everybody, Rusty Schaefer, CEO of Optech Music Systems and inventor of the Fretlight Guitar. And I'm here with Spencer Stock, music creation specialist and Guitar Pro Guru. And we're going to show you an in-depth look at Guitar Pro 6 Fretlight Ready. Uh, it's going to be a two-part series, this video being part one. And in part one we're going to cover navigating the screen, opening a tab, changing the view, setting your Fretlight preferences, we're going to show you scales, and chords, and chord diagrams, and we're even going to show you how to change the language. The second video is going to go into more in-depth review of creating tab, transposing tab, and working with the sounds and effects in Guitar Pro 6 Fretlight Ready. So we hope you get a lot out of this. It'll help you maximize your practice time. You'll learn some tips and tricks um, along the way. And in part two, we're going to cover a lot more uh, in depth about tab creation and some of the sound and effects settings. So sit back, enjoy, and um, have a go at it. Okay, so let's get going navigating the screen. We're looking at a lot of information here, but the first thing we want to do is clean this up. So this is the track area down here, and you can see the tracks. I've got lead guitar, rhythm guitar, bass guitar. I can reach up here with my mouse and I can slide that up and down. That's one way I can get some more screen real estate. Um, let's talk about the left hand side. These buttons here you see are sort of your major items that you're going to be working with in Guitar Pro 6. For, so for example, creating tab, it's this top button up here. These are all your tab symbols. Um, you've got your tuning um, and you see how I'm on bass. Isn't this funny? It shows me a bass guitar. If I go to rhythm guitar, I've got a rhythm guitar. I can look at other tunings and choose those, and the tab will change, and we'll discuss that in part two of this series. This button here is for all of your effects. I can change the different amplifiers and the effects that I'm using. I can add other ones. Um, you've got a mastering section. You've got your chord windows. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. This is for your lyrics, entering lyrics in. And here's all your fret light preferences. What are we lighting up and what do our foot switches do? But let's clear this up. If I click the button again, now that goes away. Let's make the track window go away. If you see in the upper right here, there's uh, two diagonal arrows opposite each other. If I click this, now I've got a very clean window. Um, this down here in the lower left is your browser. They call it the browser. Um, you can quickly move between the sheet music. If this bugs you, we can get rid of this too. Let me go back up and get my menu. Uh, view, let's take off the enable browser, uncheck it. Now I don't have that browser. I can still move down through the tablature by scrolling the right hand bar. But let's go back for a second over here and let's open up our tablature to fit the width of the screen. Now my tab is really big. We'll go back over to the right, click the those double arrows again. This is the maximum screen real estate. So if you're standing up playing, if you uh, are at the point where your eyes, you've been looking at tablature for too many years, this is what you want to do. This is, this is a great feature and now this tab is going to play of course uh, and it's going to change the window as we play it um, and scroll down. Okay, so let's minimize all the track window here again. And again, this is our biggest view. Let's click into the track. You can see this little yellow cursor. This is where we're going to start that main part of the verse on this song, which is Sweet Emotion by Aerosmith. If I click play, and here it comes on the fret light. Now we can, you can see how it's moving through the tablature. And I'll show you in a second how to set a loop and change the tempo. Okay, so let's let's put some of our uh, our track window back in and our fretlight preferences back in, and now let's go ahead and again slow down the tempo. So let's go to this lick again, hit play, lighting up our fretlight. Over here is the speed control. 
50% speed. Piece of cake, right? So now, let me pause that. Let's say I want to loop just that riff. So I drag anywhere. I click and drag. And there's the riff. I set loop. This down here is the loop button. There's two ways to loop. There's a simple loop, which just sets a loop and it'll loop at the speed you want. And then there's speed trainer, which is really cool. So I can go from, maybe I want to go from 60% to 100% uh, increments of 10%. And I want to repeat that one time. I click the speed trainer loop, click play. Again, our fret light is connected. Okay, and we start out slow. You can tell it's starting to speed up. This won't change over here, unfortunately. It would be nice, but maybe in a later version. So we're getting our rip. We're learning our rip, and we're setting that speed trainer up to keep increasing our speed every pass. Otherwise, if you just want a simple loop, we'll click in a simple loop. I hit play. Now I'm, my control on my speed is over here on the right. There's a 75% loop. It's just going to loop over and over and over. There's a full speed loop. Pretty simple to set a loop. Click play. It's, it's very easy. If you want to set a loop over a couple of pages, again, just click and drag down. I can, I can set a loop over anything. It's really simple. Okay, so let's open up a brand new piece of tab that you have found on the internet and you've downloaded it to your desktop or a folder on your computer. So we go over to the file menu, we click open, and I've got a folder Guitar Pro Tabs, and I'm going to open up a Joe Satriani file, his song If I Could Fly. I click on that, I click open. As you can see, Guitar Pro 6 is working by this little icon here. And there it is. Now again, remember, if I want to make it bigger, I go to this left-hand window, I can set a certain size, or I can just say fit to width. And there we go. If I close this window, it's going to make it as big as, as the width of the, of the page. So down here in the track window, I want to point out, this song, if you're unfamiliar with it, starts with some rhythm. So let's, let's hear what that sounds like. Sounds like. And I'm going to click on the rhythm track. Now you can see these are the chords. So remember, each one of these um, tracks has its own piece of tablature. There's not one piece of tablature for the entire song. If you want to think about it, um, this has three pieces of tablature. Joe's part, the bass part, and the rhythm part. There's even a clean chorus section part. Um, although that's probably more for the audio to make it sound good. So let's let's look at the rhythm for a second and what that looks like on a fret light. As you can see, the cursor is over here, and I'm going to put it back up at the beginning of the song. And now if we click play, you can see the chords light up. There's the rhythm. Now Joe's not coming in yet. As you can see here in the track window, that black dot is where we are. Now you can see Joe will come in. Again, we're not going to see it on this piece of tablature because we're on the rhythm part. If I want to see Joe's piece of tab, I can simply click Joe. There's that tab. Okay, if I want to go back to where Joe comes in, there's two ways to do it. I can come up here to the tab and I can move back Okay, we can take a look. There's that rhythm, the blank part for Joe, and I can click right there. Or, here's an easier way, click right in the first filled up colored bar of the track. This is where he begins. If we click play, we can see him playing. Okay, uh, I wanted to point one other thing out. You may or may not see a bunch of these dials here. And again, I, I made those come into view by clicking right here. That's sort of a, you know, open close. 
This is an EQ. Those of you familiar with a mixing board will get this. Those of you unfamiliar, don't worry about it. My advice to you is to close that and get the most out of your track window. Okay, so let's move on. We've opened up this tab. Um, let's talk about the fret light now. So now we've navigated around. You can see the different parts. Um, and remember, you can even light up the bass part on a fret light, right? Let's take a look at what that looks like. Again, imagine this lighting up on a bass, but there's the bass part right there. All right, let's get into our fret light preferences um, now. Okay, so let's get to fret light preferences. Again, those are accessible by what looks like a little fretboard with a bunch of fret lights lit up. So if we click that, we see our fret light status. And that's simply, does the guitar connect it? If it's not connected, you will see this. I've just disconnected, and you'll see a disconnected um, red word there. So let's connect back, which I just did. Uh, for you lefties out there, if things are showing up odd, it's because you don't have that left-handed box checked. You want to check that, and then the world will look right to you again. No pun intended. So, tablature mode. That's your basic mode. That's what we've been talking about. That's the mode where you're going to light up the tab as it flies by. Once again, here's that Joe Satriani um, tune. As you can see, that's lighting up right on the fretboard. I can pick the different parts. There's the rhythm part if you're more comfortable playing the rhythm. Okay, now let's look at the next mode, chord diagram mode. And I'm going to switch to another piece of tablature, another song. And by the way, you can up, open up multiple songs in this program. There's our Aerosmith song, there's our Joe Satriani song, and I've got a little country picking song right here. And as you can see, there are those familiar chord diagram boxes. If I scroll down and let's get to where there's some changes are going to happen, you see these four these four chord diagram boxes. If we just want to see those chords light up, we click chord diagram mode and we hit play. Watch the fret light. So if you're going to play accompaniment, maybe you just want to strum along with this. There's your chord diagram mode. I'm going to show you in a few minutes. We'll come back to this and show you how to actually step through that with the fret light dual foot switch. Um, and again, we can we can loop uh, the chords. We can slow them down. I can set a loop. Hit play. It slows everything down. and away we go. That's chord diagram mode. Remember, your, you can't just have the names. The tablature had to have been built with these chord diagrams which are accessible over here, the C7 button. See, that shows you all of your chords available that this author used in authoring these. And how they do that, and you'll see in this part two, is they just drag them right over. I'm not going to do that. Well, it looks like I did do that. Um, I won't save it. But anyways, that's how easy it is to add chords. That's chord diagram mode. So if somebody just puts a label in a piece of tab that says A major 7 above a certain part, that's not chord diagram mode. It's actually the diagrams used in Guitar Pro 6 on the tablature. Okay, let's tackle the next mode. Okay, so now let's take a look at the scale mode. This is really great for you intermediate to advanced players. Um, this is a lot like our improviser uh, functionality inside our Fretlight Studio software. So let me show you how to use this. Um, I've opened up a piece of tab that, that, uh, that we created here at Optech called Mixolydian Jam for this example. Go over here to scale mode. Let's click that. You want to click this little blue scale link. That's going to open up the scale window. I am going to pick a Mixolydian scale in the key of B. And we can minimize this window. Okay, or we don't have to. And as you can see, the scale is lit up on the entire fretboard. I'm going to limit the frets to show me 
between the seventh and eleventh fret. So did you see how I did that? I've got these little fret limiter or fret range buttons if you want to call them. Now we hit play. Now remember, we're not going to see the tab light up. Doesn't matter what I have chosen down here at all. What we want to do is we have a scale lit up on our guitar, on our fret light, and we're going to improvise over this piece of tablature. So we'll start at the beginning and I start playing. Let's listen to how that sounds. Get in there, try this stuff. Um, and we're going to be publishing a lot of these jam exercises on our website, but you can really do it with any song. You know, go ahead and mute even that Joe Satriani song. Pull up a scale and away you go. Okay, let's move on to the foot switch stuff. Okay, so a lot of you have asked, you know, what's the foot switch do? Um, and our standard response here at Optech is that you get to operate hands-free with the software. But what does that mean? So let's take a look at it in Guitar Pro 6. You see the foot switch section over here. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lower these tracks down. Remember how to do that. You grab right in between and your cursor changes and I'm just going to squeeze it down and then the, the smallest we can go is to see one track. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, that's fine. Well, we'll see two tracks. That's fine. Um, there's a left button and a right button on our fretlight dual foot switch. And so what you can do is set different uh, tasks or functions for each foot switch. This lights on is telling you that, hey, the fret light lights are now enabled and they should be on when playing the tab or whatever you're doing in the tablature. You'll see as we, when we turn the lights off, this will say lights off. So if you're wondering, hey, is my fret light plugged in? Does it work? You can always confirm what your setting is by looking at this lights on, lights off. And we'll, we'll go back to that Nixolydian Jam scale example to take a look at that. But for now, let's take a look at uh, some of these functions. So, for example, I want to show you a couple of these. Some of them are self-explanatory. Um, manual chord step through. All right, so I, what I'm going to do is open up that chord example again. And by the way, if you're wondering where I found that, their uh, Guitar Pro 6 comes with a bunch of example tabs. They're, they're kind of cool and you can see a, a bunch of these and, and kind of play around with them. This was the country picking one. Okay, we've got to be in chord diagram mode. We've set our switch to manual chord step through and I've got the left switch set. So if I step on the foot switch, you can see the chord diagrams change as I step through. My tab is changing as well. I can step through these at my leisure. It's uh, if, if you find the speed is too fast for you, it's a great way to step through a song. And you know we're going to put examples out there for you beginners of moving through, say, changing from a D to an A to an E chord. Right when you first start out, you're going to be trying to learn to switch chords, and this is a great way to do this. Just step through at your pace when you're ready to change chords. That's manual chord step through. Okay, on to the next foot switch function. Um, now let's try manual note step through. And let's put this in tablature mode. I'm gonna go back to my Satriani song and I am on his track, remember the Joe track. And let's put it right uh, on the beginning note. As you can see, it lights up on the fret light. And I want to step through this one note at a time. So here we go. I'm stepping right through these notes. That includes rests also, right? So there's a couple of rests right there and a slide or a hammer on. This could be a useful way to actually just slow some really complex um, leads down and really see exactly what's going on. That's manual note step through. Now, I'm assigning these to the left-hand button as just an example, but remember, these are all replicated in the right-hand button functions as well. So let's just do that. Let's just put play pause on the right button. So let's try this. As you see, I'm stopping and starting the song. 
Now where this comes in handy is I'll leave play pause on the right hand button. Let's go down to toggle tempo. Now this gets really fun. I'm going to lower my tracks and I want to toggle the tempo between oh I don't know 50% and 100%. Okay? So now I'm toggling the tempo between 50 and 100% and on the left button and the right button I'm just going to still have my play pause. So the right button starts us off at 50%. You can see that by the green little border around there. I've just toggled to 100%. Back to 50%. And let's pause it. Now, you want the holy grail of practicing? Let's set a loop. I drag the simple loop in. There's our loop. We're going to go from 50 to 100% within that loop at my discretion. And I'm going to start and stop it at my discretion with the right hand foot switch. So let's see if all this works. We've started it. We're at 50%. Let's go to 100%. And I'll be darned. Look at the loop. There it is. And again, I wasn't precise at setting this loop. I'm just trying to give you an example of what you can do at home. You really can do anything. You can customize your learning and your playing and your practicing so that you make your time incredibly efficient uh, in getting better. So that was play and pause and that was toggle tempo. Let's keep going and let's check out one more thing here, toggle lighting. Okay, let's go back to our Mixolydian Jam for a second. I want to illustrate why you'd want to turn the lights on and off. So as you can see, I'm in the Mixolydian Jam. Um, I'm actually, we've got to go to the scale mode, don't we? Scale mode, we need our Mixolydian in B. There it is. I'm going to minimize that window between the 7th and 11th frets. I've got that. My lights are on. I'm not going to worry about the left hand button. Just for this example, I'll, I won't confuse you. I'll get rid of some stuff. So I've, I've, I've set it to nothing. That little dash means it's, it's not active. The right button is going to toggle our lighting. So as you can see, I'm going to start the, uh, the jam and we'll play a bit with the lights on. We'll play a bit with the lights off. And again, this is what you ought to do. This myth about, well, you'll just look at lights. Well, it's like anything in our world. You can use a tool incorrectly or as a crutch. We highly suggest turning the lights off. Uh, this is going to help you transfer these scales and this knowledge to other guitars because as you play better, you're going to want to open up uh, your repertoire to playing other fun guitars with different sounds. So here we go. <laughs> Great way to practice, great way to learn. Take advantage of that. Okay, let's move on to talking about chords. We've showed you how to light up scales. We've pretty much taken care of all the fret light preferences. I didn't show you everything in the foot switch, but some of this stuff is self-explanatory. And Just get out there and play with it. Have fun. Let's take a look at chords. You want to light some chords up um, on your fret light. Again, click on this left-hand button that says C7, representing a C7 chord. And you'll see a blank little box here. Click Add. Now look what we get, the magic chord window. When I click a chord, as you can see, it's lit up on the fret light. And that includes any variation. So if I go to an A diminished, there it is. Uh, I want to click, how about an F7 suspended 4? There it is. Really the key is whatever's lit up in this window right here, is going to light up on your fret light. Now again, Guitar Pro 6 uses this to add to the piece of tablature you're creating. But another way to use this is simply you want to light up a chord and really see maybe a, you know, a variation of it uh, or an inversion of the chord. You can do that by just playing around and lighting up things in this box and they'll light up on your fret light. Okay, the final um, 
feature in Guitar Pro that I want to show you in part one of this part uh, two-part video series is how to change languages. So we scroll down here in the file menu and lo and behold we've got all kinds of languages uh, to choose from. So for example let's pick French. Um, Guitar Pro is asking you to restart the program and then it will change into French and we can do that if I close out and look at that it's even asking me if I want to save some of my tabs uh, before we close I don't want to uh, that's fine so I'll discard, discard all of the changes let's go up and launch Guitar Pro again and now as it stands there's my Joe Satriani it's actually going to open up all of your tabs upon launch that you last had open which is which is pretty cool um, and look at that all of our menus and preferences are in French and even your fretlight preferences are in French what more could you want well there you have it that's your part one in-depth look at Guitar Pro 6 fretlight ready uh, there's a lot to cover feel free to watch this again and be looking for part two very soon. And feel free to call us with any comments or questions you might have, and we'll get back to you shortly. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody.